Okay. Moving on to the practice known as debanking, is the regulation of debanking practiced by the banks your responsibility? Um, I don't know if I can talk about a regulation for debanking. The concern is that various customers no longer get banking services. Uh, it's not a particular, it's certainly not a primary issue for APRA. We understand the issue exists. Uh, in many cases, it relates to banks being able to comply with any money laundering and counter-terrorist financing uh, regulations. Well, that's, that's where I'd go to. Commander Security is an Australian cash security company. They transit cash and a large part of that is re refilling third-party ATMs. So they are competitors to the banking cartel. Commander Security are fully Austrac compliant and operate their accounts lawfully. On the 14th of October 2020, they received a notice from Westpac cancelling Commander Security's banking accounts effective from 26th of October. They have been refused accounts at other banks. Where is the protecting, where is the protecting of interests of depositors in this process? Uh, well, uh, uh, the depositors of the banks themselves are protected. I'm not aware of the specific case that you're referring to, uh, Senator, so we're happy to look at that. Well, let's look at another one then. Mel Melbourne Bullion Exchange sell gold bullion to retail investors. They are also Austrac compliant and operate legally. They were debanked by Westpac, then the Commonwealth, then the NAB, and now cannot get an account anywhere. Would you categorise bullion as a rival store of wealth to cash in the bank? Uh, no, I wouldn't actually. I think uh, cash in a bank is a very stable value and bullion uh, does not. But that's a that's a discussion about investment rather than safety. Bullion is not stable. Um, OK. The point of this question is simple. Banks are debanking businesses that they have decided are an unacceptable risk. When my office looks at these businesses, they are bullion dealers, non-bank companies providing rival services to the banks like Commander Security, Bitcoin exchanges. APRA appear to be turning a blind eye to Australian banks debanking their rivals. Can you explain that? Uh, I don't think we're turning a blind eye to it. We we understand the issues there, but banks are making decisions based on their risk profile as to whether they want to uh, take on the risk associated with some of these customers. Clearly, what we have seen in in recent times is the penalties for getting it, for getting it wrong are significant. Uh, that's not to condone the banks, but simply to make the point that they are taking it very seriously. Senator Roberts, I need to wrap you yep. up. One last question. Yep. When the Melbourne Bullion Company was debanked, Westpac not only debanked the business accounts, but also the private accounts of the owners and the private accounts of their employees. APRA is responsible for protecting the financial interests of depositors. Does APRA consider this acceptable behaviour? So our obligation to, just to be clear, our obligation to depositors is not a consumer protection obligation. It's a making sure that people get 100 cents in their dollar. I think uh, you're well, responsible also for making sure that there's adequate competition. Uh, we have to be mindful for competition, but we don't have a mandate to uh, promote or establish competition. Uh, we have to deliver safety and soundness, um, having regard to a range of other factors, competition, efficiency, ability and competitive neutrality. But uh, we're not a primarily a competition regulator.